Action! Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to ShortSellPowerHour.com. My name's Fred Weaver. This is my partner, Kevin Kaufman. I'm the producer. And uh, I let him do the action today rather than the, uh, what do you, what do you call that? Well, no, like yesterday we both did the action and like yeah. Rick almost peed his pants. So yeah, no, sure. you can actually see like he literally like was yeah, he almost, belly laughing. He almost wet his pants. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I cleaned, I didn't tell you this. Let's like, stop, okay. I, I cleaned stop, the, stop, cleaned stop. Okay, all right, everybody. So uh, I, I want to talk about FHA short sales today. Okay. I believe we did an episode back in late December of 2009 or yes, early we did. January. Maybe but December. let's be honest, uh, most of you didn't watch. And, well, we all need a reminder from time to time. Yes, we do. So I wanted to talk about allowable versus non-allowable costs that pertain to an FHA short sale. Okay, afterwards, do you mind if I talk about how stupid it is? You can talk about that. Okay. Uh, let's just educate them first. Okay. So, non-allowable costs. Let's start with those. Uh, repair, hold on. Oh, there's so many of them. It's like two different things. No, that's what I'm saying. You've got like a manuscript in front of you. Let's not even go through all these. Let's just give you the highlights. Um, they certainly don't pay for homeowner's fees, okay? They don't like conveyance fees or reconveyance fees. They don't like courier fees. Um, they don't like loan origination fees. <laughs> they don't like pest inspection fees. They don't like HOA transfer or disclosure fees or estoppel fees or short sale negotiation fees. But there's a lot of fees they don't like, but let's talk about what FHA short sale is the big one you need to need to key in on, okay? And it is that the FHA has a hard and fast rule. Now, we've yet to um, actually overcome this rule. Now, I'm not saying it can't be overcome because we've overcome lots before. How come the non-allowable side is twice as big as the allowable side? <laughs> yeah. FHA only allows 1% closing cost assistance to buyers. Hear me on that. If you've got a homeowner that you're doing a short sale on their particular home on your listing and the loan is an FHA loan serviced by anybody in the industry, the FHA will only allow 1% closing cost assistance to the buyer. Well, and that's only if the new loan is an FHA loan. Correct. That's the that's other caveat the, that people don't even know about. That's the rule, Kevin. Now, I will let you know that I have seen them pay 1% to a non-FHA loan, but the rule... Well, so we've clear, also had them approve a non-approvable hardship too for us. Correct, the rule is 1%. I think it's important you know that because while you can certainly escalate and fight and overcome lots of these things if necessary, uh, because at the end of the day, FHA just wants to make a good mitigation decision, which is why they created this silly list of rules. Oh look, they pay the title insurance. Uh, yeah, isn't that nice? Well, I mean, there's another bank. Well, there's a lot of banks that recently that aren't wanting to they, pay that. They don't. So, hey, Agents out there, make sure that when you're taking offers on your FHA short sales, that somewhere in the listing or somewhere in your conversation with the buyer's agent, you let them know 1% max closing cost assistance if it's an FHA loan, no others. So do you want to share a little bit around the hardship piece? I mean, it's been a long time since we talked about yeah, that. I mean, we have some time here on the episode. We haven't, um, you know, I can't think of like, the, there's like five quote unquote valid hardships that FHA has for Yeah, you can go find them on their sales. website. You, you can look them up on their website. Um, but we actually had a situation where it, the hardship was not one of those five allowable hardships. Yes. Um, it was like a family outgrew the home, they moved out, kept it for a while as a rental, then and had they to sell. had to sell it. and they so, couldn't rent it anymore. So they saw it as not a non-allowable one. So it took us like really kicking and screaming. Three, four, maybe five times. It took us getting a vice president at the servicer to pick up the phone and call the people at the FHA yeah. and say, you need to approve this, you're gonna save your, otherwise you're gonna cost yourself yep. tons more money. Yep. I mean, we really had to kick and scream on that the, one. The key there is though, a lot of people go, well, the bank told me this, or well, so-and-so said that they don't do this. And the key to that whole statement right there is you said, we had to get a vice president at the servicer to pick up the phone. Meaning you and I worked so hard on that file. Well, and she we worked with the negotiator and we worked with their supervisor over and over. But they kept coming back and oh, it's denied. They won't do it. It's we asked denied. them again, blah, blah, blah. And you know, eventually we said, this doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, not that arguing logic is the most intelligent thing you can do, but there does come a certain point in time when you can talk to somebody sure. at a VP level and go, look, logically speaking, we can both see how this home's ready to go to foreclosure. These people have no money. Like, make the right mitigation decision. So the VP got on the phone with the FHA and overcame that problem. Right. 
But, I mean, that took us pushing to the VP and then getting the VP to actually do something yeah. that her two employees, or however many employees below her, weren't willing to do. Absolutely. So, hey guys, if you're watching out there, go and do some research on allowable versus not allowable FHA fees. Remember the 1% closing cost thing, because that's big, okay? It's a big deal. We, you can easily make a mistake and cost your, your homeowner and your buyer, the buyer on the transaction, lots of wasted time for not noticing that up front, okay? That's all I got for today. I'm I got some pretty exciting stuff actually for later in this week. Uh, I'm gonna tell you about some uh, amazingly funny stories with Freddie Mac, including my email that included a reference to the Wizard of Oz. I actually included a few references to the Wizard of Oz. Yep, I really Oz did that. See the Wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. We've hit a new low in the show. Kevin is singing. On three, one, two, three. Short sale power hour. Short sale power hour. Crushing it with the new remote.